Oh, I'm in a bit of a different location for this one. I honestly kind of feel like I am hosting on the Buddy Brown channel. Hey, I want to start this video with the exact opposite of what you probably expect from my location. Some tech advice. Hey, I'm that guy that everyone comes to when they're having problems with their phone, their computer, their iPad, whatever it is, I'm that guy. And if you are the tech person that everyone comes to to get things fixed, I bet you ask the same first question that I do when someone comes to me with a problem. Hey, and if you're the person that comes to people like me with the problem, I bet you get asked this question and you just oh, roll your eyes every time you hear it. What's that question? Here it is. When's the last time that you turned it off? Yeah, I know, I know. Hey, I know you hate hearing that question. I hate asking that question, but here's the truth. It really, really works. It solves like 95% of all tech issues, but why does it solve so many problems? Because it forces your machine, your computer, your phone, your iPad, your, your whatever, your router. It stops all of those things from doing what they're doing it clears their RAM, it clears their CPU, and it allows them to start again fresh. No matter the device, the longer it's on, the more likely it will run clunky and slow. Apps begin taking too much CPU. That slows down the device. Temporary files, they become too numerous and they start to drain the device of precious storage. Little bugs in the system, they begin to compound one on top of another and they start robbing you of RAM. A simple on and off takes care of all of those issues. Now, I didn't bring you all the way out to a remote location in the Washita National Forest in Arkansas simply to give you some tech advice. I came out here to tell you about you. Just like our devices, we need to turn off every once in a while too. We all need downtime to function at our best. That is how we were created from the very beginning. You see, God set this pattern for us by working in creation six days and then resting on the seventh. Later, when God was giving the law to Israel as a part of what you and I know as the Ten Commandments, we are commanded, yes, commanded to rest. Even later than that, when Jesus was on earth, he lived out this pattern of work, rest, work, rest, work, rest. You know, one time when Jesus' disciples were walking through a field, they picked up some grain to eat and the Pharisees chided Jesus for their Sabbath disobedience. Yes, even picking up grain and rubbing it between their fingers was considered a violation of the law of the Sabbath by the Pharisees. But Jesus responds to them in a way that cuts right to the heart of the Sabbath. He says, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Here's what Jesus was getting at. The Pharisees had taken what should have been such a wonderful command. I mean, God was literally telling us, hey, take a break each week. And they had morphed it into a quagmire of complex issues, regulations, and details. Okay, they really messed it up. Jesus was telling them that we are not created to serve the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was created to serve us and to give us rest. So what does this mean for you and for me? It means that you and I have permission to rest. More than permission, God is commanding it. We are commanded to rest, okay? You were not meant to have week after week after week of uptime. You were designed to have some downtime too. This is, of course, if you're working hard for six days, okay? If you're a loafer, you need to have some uptime, okay? We're also created to be productive. It's all about establishing a healthy, God-ordained balance of six days of hard work and one day of refreshing rest. Okay, let's circle back to all those devices that we own. Do you know why they need to be turned off every once in a while? Because we, rather unintentionally, made them in our image. Just like we need to be turned off regularly, they need to be turned off regularly. Sabbathing, intentionally turning yourself off is for your benefit. So you need to do it in a way that honors God and actually rests you. I personally like to take a mini break every day to unwind and a weekly Sabbath to rest my body and restore my soul. Now I'm getting to do something later this year that I've never had the chance to do before. I'm taking a sabbatical. 
the elders at the church that I have the pleasure of serving, have worked into the rhythm of working at Antioch, a time of four weeks of Sabbath every seven years. And guess what? My time is up. I am so excited to completely unplug from daily ministry. It will be my first prolonged break that I've had in my more than 16 years of full-time vocational ministry. This will be an intentionally restful sabbatical, not what's often called a productive sabbatical where people temporarily withdraw from their normal work just to focus on another piece of work, like a specific task or project. No, this is for rest, but I'm also a little bit nervous. I've never stepped away from work for that long. I've been working for like 25 years at this point. So if you've ever taken a sabbatical, I'd love to hear what your experience was like in the comments below. Give me some tips. Give me some things to expect. What should I do? I, again, would love to hear from you. So again, this is your permission. Go and rest. Thanks for watching. Adios.